let's pick up then on inflation in 2023 is where I want to talk about really. Now, you, you read the inflation figures all the time. I'm sure you've seen that the, the latest UK inflation figures are high or the, uh, the consumer price index is high. And just to illustrate that for you, we, we've seen the numbers. So let's get rid of our we want beer one for you and get a bit serious, shall we? Inflation at 10.7%, which is the latest figures that we've had. And as you can see, it's riding high at 10.7. Um, there's feeling that it's gone up slightly, but nobody really knows at this stage what's happening. Although it's it's coming down a little bit. They, they, they think it's going to be coming down by point. 0.5%. But anyway, who knows? The point is, though, the RPI, the Retail Prices Index, is, is lining in at 14%, 1.4%. So, you know, inflation's pretty high in this country at the moment. And it's inflation that's causing all the problems. So where's it going to go in 23? Well, as Martin Lewis says, you want to get your crystal ball out. Nobody really knows. But the best way to look at the inflation rate, because your customers will look at it and they'll think, oh my God, inflation, 10.7%, eh, you know, 11% or whatever. And they'll think that this is scary stuff. But we'll start to see it coming down. Now, the Bank of England have all said, and the ONS have all said that inflation will start to come down. It's already dipping by a little bit for, for this current month. But it still is like 7, 8, 9, 10%. The best metaphor to use here, as I like, because you know I like an analogy or metaphor, is driving a fast car. So I, I've, I've driven a fast car once. I remember going in a police car once on a, on a, I had a, I had a gift given to me, and I was given the ability to drive fast in a police car. So you can do what you like, honey. And I got to 128 miles per hour, <laughs> shaking around I was. But of course, 128 miles per hour, I was accelerating you know, from about sort of 40, 50, all the way up to that. And that's what's happening at the moment, is inflation is accelerating. We're still going faster and faster. And that means, of course, that prices are going up year on year. Now, when you're driving this fast car, when I, when I got up to 128 miles per hour, the copper said to me, so, right, you can, uh, you can slow down now. So what I did, of course, is I took my foot off the accelerator. Now, the row was very clear ahead of me, so I didn't have to brake. And gradually, the speedometer started going down. And as it started going down, I was getting slower and slower. And that's what's happening with inflation. As it starts to come down, you're still moving. Prices aren't coming down. They're still going up year on year, but just not as fast. And as my car started to decelerate down to 105, 100 miles an hour, 90, 95, it gradually took its time to get down. Um, the only way you could get a car to go uh, backwards is to go into reverse. And very few people reverse a car. Now, that is when prices come down. Now, the point is, prices ain't going to come down again. They're not going to come down. They won't. Some might, but they won't. You don't see CPI at minus. You've never seen it. I think you've seen RPI at minus, but not CPI. It will always be going up, which means that prices are always increasing. But what we want, of course, is, is prices to increase less quickly. And that's why we're trying to bring inflation down. So, so what's going to happen then? Well, nobody knows, but energy prices are coming down. Uh, the gas price, the wholesale gas price, is uh, less than it was before the Russian inv invasion. But energy, energy companies are still charging big bucks, aren't they? The petrol price is still high at the pump although the price of oil is coming down. Everybody likes a bit of profit. So there's general prices going up. And of course, interest rates need to squeeze that. So I don't think we'll be seeing interest rates, guys, coming down this year by much at all. I think they'll go up again next month. And I think they'll stay high for quite a while. So if you think interest rates come back down to the 0.2s and stuff, you know, think again, it's not going to happen. Uh, China's reopening. So, of course, that will incur inflation over there. They haven't, they haven't really been affected by inflation because they've been locked down. Uh, you've got, um, I don't know, pay rises happening all the time now. Uh, people on strike in the public sector. In the private sector, they've been given pri p price rises, you know, wage rises. My, my son, Lewis, he's got himself a 10% pay rise. He's in the private sector. He's in IT. So it's happening all the time. People's wages are going up, and that, of course, will keep inflation going because 
the costs of that company go up and they have to increase their own prices as well. Um, in the US, you've seen inflation starting to come down now to 6.5%. So their prices are still going up, but it's decelerating. That's the thing there about the US. I mean, that they... Their Fed got got going a bit quicker than our Bank of England <laughs> increasing interest rates. <laughs> oh, Andrew Bailey stalled a little bit, didn't he? But um, we may see the same kind of thing as well. So think think inflation coming down, but don't think prices are coming down. They're not. They're still going up. That's the point about my little session today. So just to remind you of the three measures of inflation, just a quick recap for you on your CPD. And we'll whip over to a whiteboard over here for you. The one that I've been talking about, let's go over to this camera, is CPI, which is the Consumer Prices Index. That's the consumer one there. Let's put that in there for you. Now, the whole point behind the CPI is that it doesn't include housing costs. The whole point behind this one is it's consumer spending. So when a consumer buys stuff, she buys things, it's that they're the things that are in the basket for CPI. And that's the one we measure. That's the one that's at 10.7%. The, the other one is Retail Prices Index, the RPI. Now, that's retail, and that includes many other costs as well. Um, it's not used to measure inflation. It's used to increase stuff. I think government gilts are still based on RPI. Um, a lot of um, a lot of phone tariffs are based on RPI. In other words, th this this April they'll they'll increase their prices by RPI plus a few percent. And RPI is fourteen percent at the moment. A lot of people know that. <laughs> so beware, your phone bill is going to go right upwards. So again, will affect inflation. Well done there. No. RPI increases it and it affects inflation at the same time. The last one you may have come across, if you want to be a bit clever, a bit smug in the next team meeting, is the PPI. It's not, it's not uh, payment protection <laughs> insurance. This one's the producer's price index. Now, the producers, of course, are the people that manufacture goods. This is the, a sort of a cost of raw materials. So it's quite clever in a way because this one will give you how, how raw materials are increasing, like energy costs, petrol, freight costs, those sort of things. And of course, they come before the consumer prices because the, the, the producers produce the goods. The costs of the goods or, or services coming into their factory go up quickly, so they then have to increase their prices. So this is an early warning of CPI. So that's PPI. That's a bit of an update for you on inflation because I think you want to know about these things don't you? because <laughs> this is all about CPD isn't it? Okay, let's move away from that little whiteboard note there. Um, that's inflation. Keep an eye on it and see what happens. Interest rates ain't coming down.